Tease us once, shame on you. Tease us twice, shame on me. What's up guys, I'm your host Snows and this is your boot sequence. The Twitter account for Intel Graphics has released its first tweet on Wednesday. The account was created in July of this year and only just now gives us a video to tease us about the GPU set to be released in 2020. The video is nothing too impressive, just quotes from various places and a roundup of what they've accomplished graphics wise, like them being the first to implement DX12 in their graphics or the first to offer Netflix in 4K, which by the way, it's probably just a DRM limitation. Little rant here, isn't it the worst? I mean, come on, even now with my Ryzen 1700, the best my PC can do is Netflix at 1080p on Microsoft Edge and 1080p on their app, and Chrome is still locked at 720p. I mean, come on, I don't wanna use my smart TV's Netflix app because it's slow as hell, and I'm using my TV as a second monitor too. I mean, come on, just give us 4K on Edge, at least. Okay, going back to Intel's tweet, it tells us that Intel will set their graphics free, which means that the possibility of them still just expanding their evolving graphics tech onto a much bigger die is a possibility. Also, since Intel is new to the game and has experience with HBM on their EMIB, we might see them employ HBM tech instead of going for whatever GDDR memory is going to be available in 2020. We're still at least a year and a half from specific information, but I wanted to leave my speculations here so we could come back to them in a few years. What are your predictions? If you put them down here now, I might come back to take a look at them in 2020. And now for the return of In Case You Didn't Know. We have AMD which shed some light onto their Precision Boost Overdrive technology in an explainer video. It's quite simple to be honest, it's automatic overclocking created by AMD which will well void your warranty. Enabling this feature and ensuring that you have enough cooling, this can give you a pretty big performance boost. In Cinebench, Overdrive will yield about 13% increase in performance. For you guys that want more or simply prefer to manage your overclocks yourself, Der Bauer made an overclocking guide for the 2990WX. Link down below if you just want to see him work his OC magic on the 32 core monster. Then we have Twitter, which finally hammered the last nail into their API coffin. That nail has been there for around six years, waiting and warning third-party apps to move some of their features like push notifications and auto-refreshing timelines. In a Twitter blog post, Rob Johnson explains the timeline. In 2011, they told developers to not mimic the core Twitter experience. In 2012, they started capping the number of users that third-party apps could have and even granted exceptions for some developers. But they all knew this was coming. Coming. Tweetbot and other third-party apps have already removed a lot of features ahead of this change and I'm pretty curious to see how they will survive. Moving on, Alexa is now available inside of Cortana. Wow, it's a little weird to say it like that. Anyways, Microsoft announced that the integration is present and for you to use it, you just have to ask Cortana to open Alexa and then ask Alexa whatever you want. The opposite is also possible, although you need to enable the Cortana skill on your Amazon app. By the way, I'm sorry for all of the echoes I might have triggered in this segment. I've triggered mine too, so, so it's fair. Then in gaming, be ready to raise hell wherever you go because Diablo 3 Eternal Collection is coming to the Switch. You can pre-order it now as it is coming later this year and price-wise it's going to be $59.99. Also, a leaked article points to some Zelda-themed extras like cosmetic armor that lets you play as Ganondorf. Actually, after the leak, it seems like Nintendo also confirmed the Ganondorf thing. One thing I'm surprised about though is the lack of amiibos. It seems like every game gets an amiibo these days. And now to answer a question from you guys, and today it is, what's your first PC building experience like? Was it satisfactory? Well, my first PC build was horrible. I had trouble getting it to post, so I reinstalled everything like two or three times until I remounted the motherboard, and it seems like one of the standoffs was the issue. Besides that, the PC was great and still worked up until now because it's the one that got flooded a few weeks back. So I'm not sure if it still works. Maybe I should wash it down with some water and let you guys know if it still works. Anyways, that's pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like, share that video if you can. It'd be greatly appreciated. And leave a comment down below with some question. I'm running a little bit low. By the way, I'm in the comment section 24 seven, although this week I'll be answering every single comment during the weekend, so just keep that in mind. You can click right here to see the latest video and right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be, once again, greatly appreciated. So do both of these things and I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to stay frosty.
That one was nice. 